Hi, Lucy. Hi, Pete. Mom and I have good news. We just visited Carl Burkholm. He's almost fully recovered from his heart operation, and he can come home in just a few days. Well, that is good news. Carl's one of our favorite people. Speaking of favorites, is okay, isn't he? He's fine, Key. Really. Come on, Elaine. We're friends, and I see the word problem on your face. Anything you'd like to share? It's about Lucy. Dr. Shields wants me to take her to an autologist in Los Angeles for some tests. We've been through all this before, all kinds of tests. Always hoping for a miracle that would let Lucy hear again. And then the disappointment. But the doctor says they're new tests, new techniques of surgery. I just don't know. You, uh... Um, you haven't told Lucy, have you? No. What if we get the same answer? What if there is no miracle? Elaine. Lucy's a very special person. She's strong, with an attitude beyond her years. She suffered a difficult handicap with courage and dignity. And I'm sure that whatever life has to offer her, good or bad, she'll suffer it with that same courage and dignity. If there's a chance for a cure, she's... She's entitled to that chance. So if you're asking me what I'd do, I'd tell her the truth. Exactly what Dr. Shields said. I'll tell her. Then arrange for the test as soon as possible. too high, Lassie, but I, I just can't help it. Hear the, the birds, wind, voices. And most of all, Lassie, beautiful Lassie. I could hear you.
there were good days and bad days at Lane. At least we're part of the lucky few. We don't have to hear it every day. I'll be all right, Lassie. Stay here, Lassie. I'll be back for you later. Might as well fill out these papers uh, while we're making the test, Mrs. Baker. Uh, most of it's routine. Lucy's medical history, her childhood illnesses, the usual. You all set, young lady? Mm-hmm. The coffee room's down the hall on your right. We'll be in audiology the better part of an hour. Thanks, Dr. Robbins. Get Lassie out of the car. She can wait for us in this outer patio. Lucy, uh, this is Mrs. Shirley, our audiologist. She'll be giving you the hearing test. Hi. Hello, Lucy. Now you just relax. None of this is going to hurt. And if you have any questions, you just ask them, all right? The purpose for all this, Lucy, is to measure the extent of sound wave blockage to your hearing nerve. And we'll be transmitting sound tones through these earphones. It's called an air conduction test. And then we follow that with a bone conduction test. Now, if you hear something, raise your hand. Tests, the waiting. Well, hopefully this time the story will have a different ending.
most of all, Lassie. Beautiful Lassie. I could hear you. The air conduction results average 70 to 80 decibels. The bone conduction is much better, 20 to 30 decibels. It's approximately the same for both ears. There's a chance, Lucy. A good chance. I like to take chances. This picture will give you a better idea of what we plan to do. Uh, Lucy has what we call conductive deafness. It's due to otosclerosis, a bone disease of the middle ear. Now, the purpose of surgery is to loosen the blockade and permit motion to the stapes here, and then reconstruct it. Since the hearing nerve has not been damaged beyond repair, the chances are good. If you and Lucy are willing, I can operate tomorrow. Tomorrow, then. I'd like you to check her into the hospital this evening, around 7 o'clock. There's a hotel just down the street. You can settle in right away. How long will Lucy be here? Assuming there are no complications, she can go home the next day. And... And then I'll be able to hear? I mean, if everything works. Not immediately, Lucy. They'll be packing in your ear for several days. When that's removed, then we'll know more. Now, I want you to get a good sleep, young lady. Tomorrow's going to be a big, big day. Lucy's just about ready. It's time to go, dear. Worried mother. All mothers worry. It's a fact of life. I just feel so helpless.
Baker. Doctor. Your daughter's in recovery. If you want to, you can go up and see her now. How is she? Resting nicely. The operation went well. And? Now remember, I told you it may be some time before we know for sure if Lucy will hear again. You go on upstairs. I'll wait for you in the lounge. Lassie, where are you, girl? Twice, ask everyone I saw, and it's still civil. What can we do? I'll drive you back to the hotel. Call Animal Control or any other agency that might help. Give them Lassie's description. Fine. I'll drive around a little more, cover a little more territory. See if I can come up with a clue. Come on, let's go. how big the big city is. I know. I was just looking at it. Would you like a cold drink of water? Thanks. I'll have some a little later. I made all the calls. What now? Look around a little more. Make a few more phone calls. See if I can find a spot of green in this concrete jungle. Any place Lassie might go. Well, what shall I tell Lucy? 
A little lie. Tell her I had to uh, rush back to the ranch on emergency business and took Lassie with me. All right, I'll rent a car and drive us home. I'll call Ron and the boys, explain to them what happened, and try to make certain they don't give us away to Lucy. That's fine for now, Keith, but what do we do if you don't find Lassie? And Lucy will have to face the truth along with the rest of us. Patients all ready to go home. Thank you, doctor, for everything. I left a list of post-operative instructions with the nurse. Nothing to involve. And don't you worry if Lucy suffers some periods of dizziness for the next few days. It's quite normal. I told Lucy I'll be driving to San Francisco this weekend for a medical conference. I could stop by your ranch on Friday to remove the ear packing. A little afternoon, I think. We'll be waiting. Oh, uh, anything more on the collie? No, Keith is still looking. I just hope we can keep it from Lucy and until we know for sure.
cute little guy. Oh. <laughs> uh, my friend. My family. I'm looking for a friend, my colleague. She's lost. I thought this might be the kind of place she'd come. Oh? Well, I've been here ever since noontime. I haven't seen any collie. Did you call the animal shelter? Everyone in the county. Humane Society, the police. Well, it's a pretty big city. Millions of people, last count. No telling how many dogs. Oh, I don't know what I'd do if I ever lost this little old girl. I don't know what she'd do either. We're all each other has. Yeah. You live hereabouts? No, no. Uh, up in Solvang. Oh. Well, then your collie's a long way from home. Well, I'll, uh, I'll say a prayer for you at Mass. But like I say, this is a, an awful big city. You can't keep on looking forever. No, I guess about the, about the only thing I can do is go home and hope. For the good word. For any kind of word. Well, I wish you luck, mister. I'll say two prayers for you. Thanks. This little old dog means a, an awful lot to me. I know yours does to you, too. But those prayers, I'll really say them. I mean it. Thank you.
assume a good kneeling position. Lock and load. Hey, young lady. I'm all finished. Finished? Yes, Lucy. You feel okay? I feel fine, Dr. Robbins. But I... I can't hear you. Lucy, look at me. There's still some swelling in your ear. It's normal. It'll take some time for it to heal. It might still be several days before we know for sure. I've done all I can. There are no guarantees. I'm gonna hear Dr. Robbins. I know I will. Can you stay longer? I'd like to, Lucy, but I have to get on to San Francisco. I wish you could be here when it happens. So do I, honey. I wish you two would look a little more optimistic. I'm going to hear. So stop worrying. Call me in a day or two, okay? I'll save my first telephone call for you. Is the doctor been here yet? Yes. And? Still no change. She can't hear. A swelling in the ear, but the doctor says it's normal, so... We won't know for sure for another day or so. I see. Chief? Hi, Lucy. You didn't bring Lassie? Well, no, I came alone. Oh. Dr. Robbins took the packing out today. Your mother told me. I can't hear yet, but I will soon. 
Oh, I'm certain of it, Keith. Just as certain as I am that Lassie will come home again. That's what you came to tell me, isn't it? That she's gone. Yes. I guess I knew something was wrong when Mom and I left Los Angeles. And when you didn't come to visit, well... I've looked and checked everywhere, Lucy. It was an awful big city, Keith. It would be easy for anybody to get lost. We didn't want to worry you, dear. I've been worried, Mom. I just couldn't help it. But I know Lassie will come back. I've prayed for everything to turn out all right. And I'll keep praying. Please, God. Help Lassie. Take care of her. And bring her home again. girl. A fish hook. That's not in too deep. So why don't you get the first aid kit? Just hold still, girl. We'll get that old thing out of there. There now. The worst is over. Sure is a beautiful collie. Yeah. Well, I don't know where she comes from, but whatever the answer, we found ourselves a friend. Yeah. Now, bet our friend's hungry, too. How about it, girl? You want something to eat? I think she's eaten for days. No, I'll bet she's lost. Yeah, probably. Well, 
We'll let her rest for a while, but then we got to get moving. Hey, maybe she'll go with us. Well, I guess that's up to her. We're heading north. You're welcome to come along. What do you say, girl? <sighs> well, she's interested. She's thinking about it. Well, beauty, what's your decision? Yes, that sun got to me. Yeah, well, why don't you sack in? I'll find us a campsite up north away. Hey, great! Night, beauty.
Breathe deep. Get all the air you can. <coughs> Are you okay? Yeah. What happened? Propane burner was on. Collie woke me up. If she hadn't been here, we both could have been in big trouble. I guess you saved our life, girl. Yeah. We did her a little favor and she repaid us with a big one. Something sure's got her excited. Yeah, I think we're heading in the wrong direction for her. You have to leave us, Beauty? Is that it? Must know where she's going. My guess is it's a place called home.
Thank you, God. Thank you for bringing Lassie back. <laughs> and for letting me hear her. you today, Lassie. Got a prescription there? Thank you. This is a new drug. I just got it in yesterday. You're lucky I got some in stock. And a bottle of the usual? Right. I'll add this to your bill. Bye, Lassie. Give my regards to the family. most remarkable things I've ever seen. What is? A dog coming here to shop. Not really. We give her a 10% discount on everything. I want you in the hospital today. But I can't. It's the only place you can get the care you should have. And I want a lot more tests. I can't go. And I won't. I have the children to think of. What about your son, Stuart? Couldn't the children stay with him for a while? I don't know. Well, do you know where he is now? He's in California in a place called Lake Pines. You going to call Stuart? I guess I'll have to. If he can't come, I can arrange with Mr. and Mrs. Curtis. They'll take good care of him. And Lassie. Well, I don't know whether I can take care of her or not. Then there's no discussion. I'm not going to have them separated. No. Where do I get the idea that you've been eavesdropping, huh? 
Yes, Lassie. Eavesdropping outside of keyholes is her worst fault, isn't it, Lassie? Well, if she gets any smarter, I'll have to turn my practice over to her. <laughs> She'd probably do a better job, wouldn't you, Lassie? Just follow directions. I still prefer the pills. How do you know before you try it? Isn't it about time for you to go get Chip and Sam at school? Now get on with you. Go on. Hurry up. Operator, I would like to call Stuart Stratton person to person in Lake Pines, California. The Lake Pines Journal, please. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. This is ridiculous. Oh, come on, Amos. Will you stop grumbling? You'll love it. At the crack of dawn, I love nothing. It's hardly the crack of dawn, Amos. It's afternoon. Well, then what am I doing eating breakfast? I got him up early this morning so he could go out and buy that macho outfit he's wearing and his fishing equipment. Yeah, I saw his fishing stuff outside in the truck. You'd do better with a bent pin and a string. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, any idea where you're going to be? One of the lakes up near Granite Face Cliff. Whichever lake has the biggest and the fiercest fish in it. Fierce fish? <laughs> hey, Miss, wait until you have an eight-pound bass in your line. You're going to feel just like a king. You mean you've never been fishing before, Amos? Once at a carnival, I tossed a ping-pong ball into a bowl and won a goldfish. <laughs> this is hardly the same thing. It was delicious. <laughs> Is there a visitor center or a, an information bureau there? It's it's a, a resort. Oh yes, yes. Thank you. I I will talk to anyone who answers. Please. Chamber of Commerce, Lake Pines, Miss McKendrick. Uh, Miss McKendricks, uh, this is Ada Stratton calling from Aztec, Arizona. I would like to get in touch with my son, Stuart Stratton. Yes, Mrs. Stratton. I know your son quite well. But I'm afraid he's not here right now. He uh, went fishing in the mountains. He left this afternoon. Well, um, uh, could the police locate him? Well, he's with the police. I... At least he's with the chief. Even Amos Reams went along with him this time. Well, there must be some way to get in touch with him. Well, I could have call the ranger station and have them keep an eye out for him. But there must be over a hundred lakes out there where he could be. Well, I would appreciate anything that you could do, Miss... Kathy McKendrick. May I have your telephone number? From past experience, I'd say they won't be back for a week at least. I must talk to him. If it's really important, I can have the ranger send a helicopter up to search. Thank you. Bye. I don't have enough gas. You never do. <laughs> Besides, how'd you know what I wanted? 
send up a helicopter, you said. That means a trip to the ranger station to sign the papers, and that means... Sometimes you're too smart for your own good. A dollar's not going to get me very far. There and back and 20 miles to spare, and I expect you to pay me back. Well, I don't get paid until next Wednesday. Good. Maybe you'll eat at home until then. Now get going. Go on. Sure smells good, Grandma. Chip, you say the blessing, will you? Dear Lord, bless this food and us would eat it. Amen. Pass potatoes, please. Not only wasn't that a proper blessing, it wasn't even funny. Now please say it right. Dear Lord, for what we are about to receive, we thank Thee. We thank Thee also for the many blessings in keeping us safe, happy, and strong. Please help the people that are less fortunate than we are and look upon them with kindness and understanding. Amen. And I bet everything's cold by now. Pass the potatoes, please. If I were the Lord, I'd strike you with a bolt of lightning. Well, I'm glad the Lord's more merciful than you are. I'll get it. Hello? Claire and Julie said that if I try for cheerleaders, they'll put me in the middle. What do you think? Do you think I ought to? Well, uh... I think you should make your own decisions. You know, you and Chip are getting old enough to make your decisions now. Grandma, it's for you. It's Dr. Spreckles. He says it's important. Well, tell Dr. Spreckles we're having supper, and I'll, I'll return his call. Thank you. Dr. Spreckles shall call you later. Wonder what he wanted. Well, he's probably giving flu shots. You know what a worry war he is. Pour me some milk, would you, dear? Tell me again how pretty Mother was. Oh, well, you've seen her pictures. I know, but I like to hear. Well, the first time I saw Carolyn, she was about 15 years old, and she was already the prettiest girl I ever saw. No wonder Daddy fell in love with her. And Uncle Stuart, too. Where did you hear that? Everybody in town knows about it. I heard it from some kids at school. Sam? All these years, people still remember and talk about it. Sam and I'll get him. I'm up. You should learn to knock before entering. Go find something else to do. I'll be out in a minute. I'm not so feeble I can't find my own slippers. Not yet, I'm not. Go on with you. Oh, you're stubborn. I guess you get that from me. Thanks, Lassie. You're all dressed up. I've decided that we're going to take a trip. To where? To California, to where your Uncle Stuart lives. They've got the Dodgers there and the Angels and the Giants. Grandma, Uncle Stuart doesn't like us. He hardly knows you. How could he dislike you? 
Because Mom married Dad instead of him. Now, that's enough, Chip. What's the truth? The truth is that when he gets to know you, he'll love you almost as much as I do. What about school? We don't have to go to school. I have already talked to the principal. I'm ready to go now. Do we get a fly in a plane? No, we're going to take the pickup. That way we can take Lassie with us. They take dogs on planes. All crated up with the luggage. Would you want to do that to Lassie? No way. Uh-uh. Maybe we can go to Oakland and see Fred Bolitnikoff. Who's he? He's a wide receiver for the Oakland Raiders, and he's got sticky fingers. And when I shake his hands, I want to see if he has glue on him. Now, I don't know how long we're going to stay, so I want you to pack your clothes. And especially take the warm things. Because Lake Pines is up in the mountains. It might be very cold up there. And pack your valuables. We don't want to leave any valuables in the empty house. Did you remember to call Dr. Spreckles? Yes. Oh, do you remember to pack your Patrick comforter? I, I did everything. Now be quiet and, and let me drive. Maniacs, that's what drivers are nowadays. Oh, I'm, I'm afraid my nerves are shot. Grandma, want me to drive for a while? No, you're not old enough. I got my learner's permit, and I'm a good driver. You said so yourself. Well, that's on country roads. This is the jungle. You better hide. They're probably looking for you. Yeah, they can look all they want to. It's the first time I've been away from that office in eight months. I'm unavailable. <laughs> Give a hundred dollars if that thing would land and get me out of this wilderness of non-confusion. I'd get two hundred dollars just to have you shut up. Who ever heard of anybody fishing in a lake that's frozen over? We didn't know the lake was frozen until we got here, Amos. Well, you're supposed to be a detective or whatever. You should have been able to figure it out. Of despair, Amos. We'll find another lake. Despair is my middle name. <laughs> Come on, Amos. Relax and enjoy it. It's a vacation. A vacation for me is indoor plumbing and room service. In that order. <laughs> oh, you enjoy, all right. You wouldn't want to get rid of her, would you? No, ma'am, never. Lassie's been with this family since she was born. <laughs> Grandma, can you drink some water? What's the matter? <laughs> Wash it down with this. <laughs> I think it's all right. Please, go back to your tables, please. It's going to be all right. Go on back, please. I'm going to be all right now. <laughs> it was a heart attack, wasn't it? No, certainly not. I said, go, got to a gallbladder. I've been having a lot of gallbladder attacks lately. Grandma, I was really scared. I'm a tough old bird, Chip. <laughs> Didn't think I was gonna let a gallbladder get me down, did you? <laughs> it was a heart attack, wasn't it? I told you what it was. I know what you said. I don't believe it. You can take my word, can't you? I'm not a baby anymore, Grandma. Please tell me the truth. Well, I... 
I didn't want to burden you with it. It's a, I've been having heart attacks for a while now. They're, they're little ones, nothing big. You could have told me. But now that I've told you the truth, we can't we just forget it and enjoy the trip? being old, Lassie. Seeing her like that. I can't even remember her being sick before. I want to tell her I love her. I don't know how. Watch your hotels on your side, and I'll watch on mine. Okay, Grandma. Look at the palm trees, Lassie. It's really California. <laughs> Grandma, the road's clear. Grandma? Grandma? <laughs> dead. All right, operator, give me the police department there. Hello? This is Sergeant Lewis to Hemet Police Department. Is your chief there? Fishing. How about coming with me? Where are we going? Well, there's a nice family, the Waldrops. Well, you can stay with them a couple of days until we can get a hold of your uncle. This is Sergeant Lewis to Hemet Police Department. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, ensure in certain hope of the resurrection unto eternal life. these strangers. You talked to Uncle Stewart yet? No, but we left a lot of messages for him. He'll call. I'll come out to see every chance I get. keeping her. She has to stay at the animal show. Why? You can't let them. Well, I don't have any say about it, honey. We're just renters. The landlord won't allow us to have any pets. It's not a pet. It's Lassie. Come on, children. Now <laughs> leave her. Come on. No. No, no, Lassie. Tell him to stop. Oh, 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 please. Oh, oh, Lassie. Lassie. You're just going to take care of her until your uncle don't let him go to us. Oh, oh.
You said we could go visit Lassie tomorrow. Well, Joan can take you to the shelter. Pound. Please eat something, Chip. I'm not hungry. I know that this is a very hard time for you, but it'll pass. <laughs> Bad things always do. It just takes time. But you let them take Lassie away. For no reason. She could have slept in the backyard. It's just that she's never been away from us at night. And she's probably all chained up in some strange place. Scared and lonely. With no one to care for her. Like us. Well, you're with us, so we care for you. But the city pays you to keep us. Chip, be quiet. Well, they do, don't they? Let him be alone for a while. I'll go talk to him. It was a very good supper, ma'am. Thank you. Sam, what are we going to do now? What's going to happen to us? I'll think of something. Put us in an orphanage, like the one in Aztec, with the fence all the way around it. They won't do that to us. They can't. They don't even let boys and girls stay together in the same orphanage. And I heard that people come by, and they stand you up in the line. And if they like the way you look, they'll snatch you up and take you home with them. And no one's going to want the both of us together. If we can't be together and take Lassie with us, we won't go. They don't ask you if you want to go or not. They just take you. And you know what they do to dogs at the pound? I guess our only hope is Uncle Stewart. He isn't going to want us. We'll look on the bright side. We'll go see him like Grandma wanted. What are we going to do about Lassie? We've got to get her away from that place. We'll figure out something tomorrow. When Mrs. Walter takes us to visit her.
looking for her. We gotta run away. They'll probably get the police after us. Do you want us to stay here and be put in one of those orphanages you talked about? And have Lassie take me to the pound and, you know. Lassie, I'll never let anyone take you again in your life, I promise. Promise her later. Get dressed. like they're friends. You're the scruffiest thing i ever seen. You need a bath, boy. Gonna have to take them with us. Look, the farther we get away from here before daylight, the better off we're gonna be. Come on. Hurry up. Come on, Scruffy. Lassie, stay against the wall. As soon as you see the police department, run for it. Okay. We can get put in jail for stealing. We're not stealing. The pickup belongs to us now. Where are the keys? Get the key. Let's get out of here. I'm looking. I'm looking. Well, hurry up. Oh, shut up. You're making me nervous. I don't think they're here. Where did they kept them? Oh. oh. I'd 
behind the truck. They'll see the keys. Chip, wake up, Chip. Check the map, see if there's a town close by. We're almost out of gas. Maybe we can get something to eat, too. How can I tell if I don't know where we are? A few minutes ago, we passed a place called uh, San Jacinto. Here's a town called Beaumont. How far? About this far. Can we make it? We've got no choice but to try. Speck, uh, take care of yourself until I can get there. Well, anything else? Yeah, I'd like the truck outside filled with gas, please. Let me just uh, tote this up first. How's it going, Jack? I don't know yet. I just got out of bed. Well, I tell you, you ought to have a good breakfast. Yeah, well, this is it. It comes to five ninety. I keep the gasoline separate from this. Good morning. Good morning. We'll be going now. Thank you very much. I thought you said you wanted some gasoline, too. Uh, no, I guess not. Thanks just the same. Hey, just a minute. Miss? Yes, sir? You're not driving that pickup, are you? Uh, no, sir. My daddy is. Well, I don't see him anywhere around. He went to the men's room. Ma, uh, where are you from? San Diego, sorta. That's in California. Are you 
had it. Los Angeles. That's in California, too. We're on a kind of a vacation to see if uh, Fred Balenkoff has got sticky fingers. Yeah, he's a baseball player. Don't go play now. Dispatcher, dispatcher, this is 943. Come in, please. Dispatcher.
Well, thanks, J.D. It was a great trip. Yeah, boy. Yes, we must do it again sometime soon. <laughs> well, like it or not, Amos, it took off some of your flab. I don't consider sleeping on rocks, freezing to death, and doing what comes naturally as keeping in shape. I'll stay flabby, thank you. Ugh, nasty little creatures. <laughs> Oh, that's about all our gear. Oh, good. He gone? Yeah, why? I got to admit, a good hot bath would feel good right now. <laughs> sure, I agree with you, old man. Take care, J.D. Will do. I cook for dinner. How about uh, anything but fish? What happened? I don't know. My mother called. She was very disconnected. Yes, I'd like to talk person to person to a Sergeant Lewis, Hemet Police Station, area code 714 658 2202. I wish we could punch a hole in that aqueduct and get some water. See if we can get a drink. Will you look at her? Yeah, at least she knows which one to use. <laughs> you know, there must be some kind of animal act around here somewhere. Yeah, it looks like it to me. It's really nice of you to give us a ride, Ron. Yeah, just don't ever tell anybody because it's against regulations. Yeah, sorry we can't take you all the way to UK, you, but we got to get back to base, that is, before we uh, get any more trouble than we already are. What base is it way out here in the middle of nowhere? Camp Wallace practice range, and uh, you're right about the nowhere part. Now that's the Highway Patrol, or the Chippies. <laughs> wow, you guys got a name for everything. <laughs> like I always say, turnabout's fair play, and uh, if they can call us jarheads, we can call them names too, right? You bet. This is your Kuiper dispatch. Update the missing persons report. We're just out of Mentone on our way to Green Spot, but still no sign of the kids. What do you want us to do? Stay on it. There's a lot of heat coming down. Stop at every underpass and look. They may have left signs that they were there. And if there's a drainage ditch running alongside, check it. That'll take days. If it takes that long, they could be dead. I wonder who they're looking for. Oh, I got no idea at all. You, Mitch? None at all.
You know, whoever it is the police are looking for, they certainly won't be looking for them on this road. Whoever it is they're looking for. Where does it go? Baghdad, straight out of the Arabian Nights. Nah, but it's the way we get back to base anyway. We could drop you off at Baghdad, and if you stay right on the road, you'll get to your Kaipa. Wish we could take you all the way, but we're already late getting back. Oh, <laughs> are we ever? Like I said, you stay on this road and you'll get to Ukaipa. Somebody will come along and pick you up. Take care. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Okay, yeah, take thanks. it easy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Okay, you gonna do it or am I? Aw, oh, man, you do it. You're the best fink I know. And that's exactly what I feel like doing, buddy. But let me tell you, it's for their own good. Calling Highway Patrol. Highway Patrol, come in. This is the Highway Patrol. Who's this? We just gave a ride to two kids and two dogs. Does that mean anything to you? Please identify yourself. We picked them up at a rest area near Fenner Junction and uh, gave them a ride to Baghdad. Right now, they're headed up somewhere around Eucapia. prosecuted? Neither do I, but it's too late now. We've got to go on. We should have stayed on the road like Ron and Mitch told us to. There's too many police on the highway. And besides, cutting through here says it's about an extra hundred miles. Lake Pines is up there. Yeah, but it looks awfully far away. You better get going then. Come on, Lassie, help us. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on, help us, Lassie. That's it. Dig, Chip. I am digging. We've been looking all over. No, thank you. Let's check the railroad back. Okay. Nobody's seen anything. Let's get out of here. There's nothing over there either. Unit 17. Watch out, be careful.
Sure hope so. Maybe they don't do it anymore at night. Maybe there's not going to be any more bombs. We better wait a little longer. I'm sure hate for us to be wrong. Anything? Nothing yet, sir. What do you guys have to do to find two lost kids? Well, we've got every available man on it, and some of us have been up for 20 hours. We've been patrolling every highway and road and cow track from here to Beaumont. I can't be so sure they're headed this way. I can't imagine you're taking seriously some anonymous tip. It's the only tip we have, sir. And if it's true they're trying to get to you at Lake Pines, it's a logical route. <laughs> but, officer, all Mr. I... Mr. Stratton. Most of those men out there looking for them have kids of their own. Brooding. I wasn't a very good son. She deserved better. What would you have done differently? I don't know. Seen her more often, called her. I've been so stubborn or unforgiving. Well, I'll agree that you're stubborn. <laughs> but you're not unforgiving. You don't know the whole story. I don't know any of it. It's a part of your life you never told me. Maybe because it seems so silly now, but it wasn't then. You see, my brother Charlie and I fell in love with the same girl. She chose him. I never quite got over it. Stupid. Yeah. Especially when there are a lot of nice girls like me around. What happened then? Hmm. On their wedding day, I joined the army. I only did it to hurt them, but I hurt my mother, too. So, like I said, she deserved better. Did she blame you? Or did she understand? No, she understood. That's why it hurt so much. You know, if I was half the man I pretend to be, I would have been best man at that wedding, kiss Carolyn on the cheek, and wish them happiness forever. Stuart, that was then. This is now. You're not the same person. When they died, I went home. There were the two children, babies, really, left for my mother to raise. I could have stayed. I could have helped, but I didn't. By then, you had your own life to lead. Could your mother really have wanted you to give it all up and come back to the nest? Probably not, but I'll never know I didn't ask her. Now, Kath, the, the thing I can't get out of my mind is, is the picture of my mother desperate to try and get a hold of me because she knew she was dying. Packing the kids up and driving off in a pickup truck, trying to reach me before it happened. Having her die in the middle of a street of a strange town and to have the kids there to... to see it. your leg. Come on. It's all my fault. I killed him. It's not your fault, really. Oh. Don't move around. It makes the 
poison get into the blood faster. I'll put her on a constriction band. Don't move around, Chip. Please stay as still as you can. Damn it, burns like fire. If the poison gets to your heart, Lassie, fetch me a branch. I think I'm supposed to slow the blood flow down, but not stop it completely. Is that right? Yes, keep the leg down. This is gonna hurt, but if you're tough, you can stand it. What are you gonna do? Cut your leg. Gonna try and get as much of the poison out as possible. Oh. Well, you're a boy scout. You know what I have to do. Doesn't mean I have to like it. Here, bite down at it as hard as you can. Quick, for me, quick. Oh. Ow. Ow. Lassie, I don't know how far we are from help, but well, that old road must lead somewhere. Follow it. I don't know if you can find anyone, but try. Try hard, Lassie, please.
Why, you poor thing. Where'd you come from? You look like you've been through a lot. You stay there. I'll get you some water. Now just stay there. shape if you won't even drink water. I'm gonna call the doctor. Hello? Jerry, this is Juno at the station. Well, there's a dog out here. She come up and just fell down. Well, I tried to give her some water, but she's too exhausted to even drink it, poor thing. Well, come as quick as you can. All right. You're gonna be all right, girl. Just you take it easy, and we'll fix you up. Has she got anything? Exhaustion, for one thing. What are you gonna give her? A sedative. Rest easy, girl. Hold it for me. This won't hurt a bit. Now, be good girl. Doc's gonna help you. That's a good girl. Scruffy. Scruffy. Not my fault. Grandma? Hang on, Chip. Please. Please, God. I'm sorry for lying so much and anything bad I've ever done. But Chip's always been good and he doesn't deserve to die. And if you let him live, I'll never lie or do anything wrong ever again. I promise. What are you doing awake? That sedative should have kept you asleep for another four hours. Relax, and I'll bring you some food. Okay, girl, okay. You tear your nails off if you don't stop. I'll give you another shot. Calm you down. There's no need to be afraid. Good girl. Hey, come back! Hey, come back here! How about some breakfast at the diner? I just saw J.D. go in. No, good. Maybe he's heard something. If he had, he'd have called you. Or maybe he tried to call after we left the house. What's going to happen to them after they find them? Boarding school, I guess. Best place for them. On second thought, have breakfast by yourself. What's wrong with her? I can't imagine. Wait a minute. What's all the racket out here? 
Reporter of the kids said that they had a collie with them. Are you serious? That dog couldn't have made it all this way. Come here, girl. Come here. No, 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 not girl. It's, um... Um... Lassie. Lassie? Lassie, come here. Lassie! That's the dog! Lassie! I think she's just conned us into keeping her company. You chase a lot of dogs, do you, Amos? I chased my share, but they weren't all dogs. I almost married one once. Well, this is too serious to joke about. Do you honestly believe that dog, if it's the right dog, could have gotten this far alone? Maybe and maybe not, but if it is Lassie, then she probably knows where the kids are, and we've got to try. Okay, Sam, let's go. See. <coughs> All right, easy does it. I can walk. It hurts, but I can walk at least halfway. Oh, oh. Dr. Brewer said what you did was exactly right. You saved his leg and his life. Thanks, J.D. Yeah, I'll send your bill for the gas. Oh, great. I'll just add it to the rest of the damages I have to pay for. See ya. <laughs> Take care, J.D. We're really sorry, Uncle Stuart. Well, be sorry later, sweetheart. Let's get inside. It's cold out here. Oh. oh, no, 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 no. The dog stays outside in the garage. But she's not used to staying now. Dogs are made to stay outside. That's why God gave them fur. But Lassie's not just dog. She's people. 
people or not, I am allergic to dogs of any persuasion. She stays outside, and that's final. But Uncle Stewart, she wouldn't understand. I'm sorry, Sam. I, I, but I'm very adamant about this. No pets allowed. Come on, Chip, Lassie. We're not wanted here. Wait a minute, wait a minute, where are you going? I don't know. We'll find some place. Amos, don't look at me. It's your problem. I guess I'm just not used to dealing with children. Lassie saved our lives, and she goes where we go. There's an awful lot of your grandmother in you, you know that. <laughs> All right, all right, she can stay inside, but not downstairs in the bedrooms, up here, or I'll be up sneezing all night. Come on, kids, I'll show you your bedroom. You stay here, Lassie, you understand? You're to stay here. That's round one. Anything I can get you before I go to bed? You want to take Lassie to your bedroom for tonight? Every time she moves or anything, I sneeze. <coughs> Why don't we have her stuffed? You're disgusting, you know that? I'm glad you noticed. I try hard enough. <sighs> Uh, Avis, what am I going to do about these kids? And look at this list of damages I have to pay for. Ever think of keeping them? Giving them a home? Oh, come on, Amos. I can't do that. I mean, a bachelor shouldn't have kids. What you really mean is they might get in your way. Children at that age need a father and a mother. Well, they'll certainly get that at a boarding school. Hey, I got a great idea. It'll be a first. I better write it down. Why don't you get them an apartment in town, pay them pauper's wages, let them deliver the newspaper? Go to bed, Avis. Well, if you don't like that, I got another idea. Why don't you marry Kathy? That way, they'll get a good mother. <laughs> and what makes you think she would want to marry me? <laughs> you're not only allergic to dogs, you're blind, too. Amos. Go to bed. A bachelor. And a happy one at that. I, I have my own life to lead. I need kids around to mess it up for me. A boarding school is the best place for them. But they're good to the children. They, uh, they guide them. They teach them. That way they'll have both a, a father and a mother image. What am I doing talking to a dog? Well, first thing tomorrow morning, I'll make some phone calls, find out the best school available. And I'll figure out what to do about you later. All right, Lassie, stay here. Lassie, you heard your orders. Now stay here. Lassie, you get back up here where you belong, or I'll take a switch to you. <laughs>
Well, you were right. Uh, she wouldn't have been happy surrounded by strangers, so... Uh, while you two were eluding the police, I had her brought here. Thank you, Uncle Stewart. Yes, she'll like it here. You can visit her whenever you want and bring flowers. Does that mean you want us to stay here with you? Uh, just for a month's trial. It doesn't work out in that time. It's, uh, off to boarding school, okay? We'll be good, Uncle Stewart. We'll work for you and help pay back the police car that was raised. All right, and enough. I can't take all this goodness at once. Oh, <laughs> feeling my life has suddenly changed for the worse oh no kids come on Don't let go. Not just 
Got to get this old girl tied down nice and tight. You can ease up now, lad. Well, you did a fine job, you and the collie. I want to thank you. And you too, Pooch. Her name's Lassie. Oh, Lassie, eh? What's yours? Kitty Martin. Well, my name's Jake Hodges, and I want to thank you, Timmy. And you too, Lassie. You know, I might have cracked old Annabelle here into the trees if you hadn't come along and helped me get her down. Gosh. Well, why'd you want to land? Well, I didn't want to, Timmy. I had to. You see, in a balloon, you've got to play it real safe. See, there's a nasty little squall in it this way. I saw it a few minutes after I got up, and I've been fighting to get Annabelle here down ever since. How do you get a balloon down anyway? Well, you see, Timmy, there are two ropes. Now, one is the rip cord. You pull that and pfft, you come down, but fast. Now, the other one controls a valve that lets the gas out real slow, and you float down. Gee. Now, I'll just... Hitch myself a ride back to the fairgrounds, grab me balloon gear, and I'll be back here before the storm hits. My dad has to go into town. He'll be glad to drop you by the fairground. Well, I call that real neighborly of you. You've been a great help. And you'll find Jake's not one to forget a favor. Come on, lad. Thanks again, lad. That's OK. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. When you come to the fair, I'm going to give you a free-for-nothing ride. You and Lassie, both of you. How's that? Would you like that, eh? Would I? Could be, Dad? Well, I guess it's all right for you. But I'm not so sure about Lassie. She'd like it, too. Wouldn't you, girl? <laughs> Looks as if Lassie wouldn't fancy a ride. I know she would. Well, we'll see. Toodaloo, Timmy. Toodaloo. Chicken or something? That wind's getting worse, Lassie. We better go keep an eye on that balloon. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, Timmy's quite a fan of yours. We've been watching you fly over here almost every day. Oh, I'm on it. And lucky. You know, without his help, it might have taken me a lot longer to get Annabelle down. I'm curious. How will you deflate the balloon? Well, we don't. We take the basket off, and then we bed the balloon down with sandbags. And then tomorrow, when the wind... Stop the truck! What is it? I think I saw Annabelle. see anything I could have sworn it was my balloon what do you think we should do better hot foot it to where I left her must have worked herself loose. Hello? How do you suppose that happened? What? This sledge. I distinctly remember putting it back in the basket. Was anybody near the balloon when you left it? No. Timmy and Lassie helped me to bring it down. Maybe Timmy knows something about it. Come on, let's go ask him. just after you left. Blimey, there's Annabelle. Someone's turned on the blooming music. You mean someone's in there? Seems like it. Timmy? Jenny, get me the sheriff's office. Quickly, please. What is it, Paul? Well, we're not sure yet. Look, Sheriff, this is Paul Martin. You know that balloon that was used to advertise the county fair? Well, it broke loose and... There's a strong possibility that Timmy and Lassie are in it. What do you mean? 
for they couldn't be. Ruth, dear. Now, please, it, it's going to be. Sorry, Sheriff. What was that? Yes. Yes, we appreciate it. Thank you. Up in that balloon. Ruth. I... We don't know that they are. Only that he and Lassie were the only ones who knew where the balloon was. Oh. And that somebody's up in that balloon now. Oh, you've got to do something. The sheriff knows what to do, and he promised to call back in a little while. Oh. Now, in the meantime, the the balloon is. Well, I well, maybe. Terrified. Yes, sir. I see. Yes. All right. Thank you. Now, listen, dear. It, uh, it may take a little time to locate the balloon because of the fog that set in, but, well, the forest rangers are on the lookout, and the Civil Air Patrol will send out search planes and helicopters. Ruth. Got to have a little faith. Why, uh, why don't you start the supper, dear? They may be home by then, and they'll be plenty hungry. see someone or at least talk to somebody who can give us some information.
program to bring you the latest report on Timmy Martin, the young boy who, with his pet dog, is adrift in a runaway balloon. Use North Runway 2 for takeoff. Repeat. F-937, use North Runway 2 for takeoff. Uh-huh. Now we figure it this way. Prevailing winds are north by northwest. So, allowing for slight variations in wind velocity, the balloon should be traveling in a northerly direction at a rate of approximately 30 miles an hour. Now, I'd suggest you rangers cover the Mitchell County area. Right. Four of our planes are ready now. F-937. Okay for takeoff. Please report on weather conditions over Granite Peak. F-937 to tower. There's nothing yet. I'm heading south over Falmouth River. C-664, return to base, over and out. This is F-937. No sign of the balloon over Mitchell County. We're running out of fuel and we'll put down at Danfield Airport. Over and out. R-386, calling CAP. R-386. No luck on this leg. Waiting further instructions. Over. R-386, return by way of South Fork River. Pete ran out of fuel in that area. Over. Gotcha. Heading for South Fork right now. Over and out. I can't understand it. If that balloon had come down, one of our planes should have spotted it by now. Do you think there's a chance it might still be up in the air? Yes. Yes, could be. With strong prevailing winds due north, it could have blown across the Canadian border. Good Lord. Give me Civil Aviation Board headquarters in Canada, please. One of these ropes made the gas come out real slow.
down. Almost. Too much. Yes, Cully. No. No, there's nothing you can do. Well, now that the weather's cleared, the Civil Air Patrol is sure they'll be found soon. Yes. Yes, I, I will. Oh, I'll let you know right away. All right. Goodbye. So good.
Yep. American calculations are correct. The balloon might possibly be in this region here. George, call Mountie headquarters and alert them. Ned, you notify the rangers to keep a sharp lookout. Let's get all our planes in the air over this area. This is Erickson. Get me the radio network office. I want to talk to the news editor. I get this bone made, girl. I'll have you some food in no time. told me that the Indians used to heat the points of their arrows to harden them.
right back. Please, girl. Please eat. You have to. To keep your, to keep your strength up. So we can get home. too much. Especially mom. You know how she worries about little things.
just take it easy, girl. I'll get us to water. Somehow. Let's see. We're going that way, won't we? reporting in on side of the balloon. It's hanging in tall pines, approximately 12 miles from the south branch of Wilderness River and about 20 miles from Loon Lake. Couldn't see any sign of boy or dog. Over. Circle and no landmarks. Then report back. Over and out. Edna, get me the American CAP headquarters. You know, the one that contacted us. No, there's no sign of the boy or dog yet, but the Canadian authorities are launching an all-out search in that area. Incidentally, I'm uh, sure the parents would appreciate all the cooperation they can get from you newspaper folks and everybody else. Sure. So long. Well, take it easy, darling. At least they've pinpointed the area where they came down. Now listen carefully. Captain Stanley has arranged to fly us up there this afternoon. You pack a bag, and I'll be home in about an hour to pick you up, okay? All right, dear. All right. Please, God, let him be all right. Now, the river will take you within 12 miles, more or less, of where the balloon was spotted. I believe you're going to have to go in from here. Ranger Henty reporting, sir. Hello, Henty. This is Sprague and McDonald. You'll be going with them. Hello. How do you do? We're just trying to figure out the best route to this spot where the bloom went down. Couldn't have picked a worse place. There isn't a road within 20 miles. That's right. I think you better go to this point by truck and then take the river to here. And the rest of the way, gentlemen, will be on foot. Uh, God help the wee lad if he's wandered any distance from that balloon. Here, Matt. Take this map with you. Thank you, sir. Well, gentlemen, shall we get going?
It's water, Lassie. It's water. It's water. Going. John Stanley said that plane was going to leave at 3 o'clock. I'm all ready. I just thought I'd take Timmy's sweater with us. You know, the one that Cully gave him last Christmas? Must be awfully cold up in those Canadian woods, and I wouldn't want him catching cold. Oh, I'm sure we'll be able to find a sweater for him up there. Yes, I guess so. What do you really think? I think you're the bravest woman in all the world. I mean, do you think they'll find him? I'm sure they will. I keep thanking God that Lassie's with him. Well, well if anyone can take care of him, Lassie can. Do you want to call Cully and ask him to take care of the farm while we're away? I already have. I think maybe it'd be a good idea to take this sweater along after all.
pretty good, eh, girl? Dad once told me that if you follow a river far enough, you will eventually come to people. I've got an idea, girl. We'll build a raft. Come on. this point right here. The balloon is about 12 miles due west. Okay, let's go. Here we go. Sure beats rocking, Lassie.
let the dog down with a sling <laughs> and use the rope for himself. He's a smart kid, all right. Looks like they took out toward the river. We better get going. And pray we're not too late. He's drunk some logs through here. He filled himself a raft. Well, that means he's gone downriver. It's too bad he didn't stay here. 
What do you think we ought to do? Well, I'll go back and get the canoe. You stay here and set up a base camp. Will do. Help me off with this pack. And we'll keep in touch with headquarters on the short wave. This is Randy Collins coming to you once again by remote control from the Mountie headquarters at Loom Lake. The plight of a small boy and his faithful collie dog lost somewhere in the vast Canadian wilderness is tugging at the heartstrings of the entire continent, ladies and gentlemen. Bye, ladies and gentlemen. I think Mr. and Mrs. Martin are here now. Oh, well, Mrs. Martin, will you join your husband in the searching party? When will you leave, Mr. Martin? Well, as soon as transportation's available. If you'll excuse us now, Sergeant Major Hardwick's waiting to talk to us. Uh, Mrs. Martin, would you care to make a statement to the other mothers and fathers who might be listening in? Well, uh, yes, uh, but only just to express appreciation for the many prayers and messages of sympathy. Oh, uh, yes, and to say thank you to the Canadian authorities for their cooperation. Thank you. That was Mrs. Paul Martin. Thanking all the people of the expression. Mr. Martin? This is my wife. How do you do, Mrs. Martin? Won't you please have a seat? Thank you. Mr. Martin, we've finally located a helicopter for you. It should be here sometime this afternoon. Have you heard any more uh, about the progress of the search, I mean? We'll soon be in direct contact with our search party by short wave from their camp. You will let me know, won't you, the minute you hear anything? Immediately, Mrs. Martin. Two of my best men have been assigned to the case. They know the area well, and they know how to cover it. We have accommodations for you at the hotel across the square. Thank you. I'll call you as soon as the helicopter arrives. I won't try to thank you. No doubt you've heard of the Monty tradition, that he always gets his man. I believe in this instance we can broaden that to include his small boy and his lost dog. We've been in touch with headquarters on the short wave. The lad's parents are there, and his father's been flown down here by copter. Should be here later today or tonight. Well, Mac and I'll follow the river down as far as the falls. Well, I hope we've got some news for his father when he gets here. But if we haven't found the boy by the time we reach the falls, any news we could give him would be bad. We'll keep in touch by walkie-talkie. Right.
my dog Lassie is?
wants us to follow her. Go on, Lassie. Chinook Peach place. Chinook Pete? Yeah, you know, the Indian. The deaf mute whose wife and child died last year during the epidemic. Let's take a look around inside. Have been here. There's nothing to show that he was. Hey, where did Lassie go? Lassie! 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 Come here, Lassie! She's out there somewhere. safe now, Timmy. Everything's all right. Dad, we just got to find Lassie. First, we've got to get you back to your mother. She's worried half to death. What about Lassie? Lassie can take care of herself, Timmy. We'll find her. We'll find her. We can put down at the ranger camp by the river. 
and probably reach Mrs. Martin by short way from there. Maybe they have some news about the boy's dog. Could we, Dad? We can talk to Mom that much sooner. Yeah, sure, Timmy. Sure. Come on. I know you are, dear. I just wanted to hear your voice. It sounds good to... to hear your voice, too. I... I thought I might... never hear it again. <laughs> Timmy... your dad didn't say anything about Lassie. I, have they found her? No. No, Mom, they, they haven't. Oh! <laughs> 